Is moving abroad really the right choice for you? Or more specifically, is moving to Italy the right choice for you? In this week's episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, I wanted to talk a bit about this subject, but just before we get into the rest of this episode, a huge thank you to the patrons who helped to make these episodes possible on a monthly basis. Of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia. This is Not Your Average Globetrotter, and roll the intro. This is a question I've been thinking about a lot recently. I've been getting a lot of private messages from people who are thinking, is now the time? Should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? What are the pros and what are the cons? I've done quite a few episodes on these topics, but I wanted to go into some specific reasons why a person may want to consider why they might not want to, in fact, actually move to Italy. And some of these will apply, of course, to anybody moving abroad but some of them are very, of course, specific to this country. But also, just a quick question, a common question of the week for those of you who watch this regularly, uh, for those of you who are watching this episode on YouTube, that is. What do you think of the background? Do you guys like the normal background that I use, or do you prefer seeing a little bit of something outside while I do the normal episode? Anyway, let me know, just curious. But the first, the very first topic that I want to talk about is that if you are an impatient person, person. Everything here does take a long time and, well, maybe other than Amazon. Although even when talking about Amazon, there are some products that are on there that could take a couple weeks, if not more. But generally speaking, Italy is not a fast-paced country. It is a country known for the slow movement of life. And that is something that attracts a lot of people to come here. That's something I want to talk about a little bit later on in this episode as well. But are you somebody who needs things done fast? Are you an impatient person? Or are you a very patient, laid-back person? Or are you a laid-back person who's impatient? I don't know if that really works, but could. <laughs> but another one is that uh, if you aren't willing to take a chance on expanding your waistline, then don't even think about coming to this country. A lot of great food here. And it is a very serious potential problem. Unfortunately, I can say from personal experience here. All I'm going to say is that you have been fairly warned. <laughs> but if you hate dealing with paperwork, this is something that is everywhere here. Like I've said in a number of episodes, bureaucracy here is practically a national pastime. You've got soccer, aka calcio, and bureaucracy, these reign king. In Italy. And we're not just talking about official matters, but when we're talking about those, let's start there. Those have a lot that comes along. You have to do the paperwork and then say, like, you're moving into a new apartment you're, or you're changing from one apartment to another or you're moving to Italy for the first time. You will have to have a police check. You'll have to go and register with the, the municipality, the, the, the city hall. Then you'll have to wait for the police to actually come and check that you live where you say you live and that it's correct information and that the information that they have about you is correct. And then it takes a couple days after that, maybe a day, maybe two days, maybe more. It depends on where you are for that information to then go be confirmed so that you can take care of other things if you may need. Or if you are going to purchase something, say, for example, from a supermarket, normally in larger chain stores, you find this, but even non-chain stores, like you buy something and you end up with a, a folder of paperwork that you come out with. I mean, even if you go to the supermarket, I've had receipts come out longer than the introduction to Star Wars, any Star Wars movie. Much longer. They just keep going and going and going and going. There is no end. And sometimes it'll be divided out onto three receipts, two receipts, five receipts. Yeah, fine. It's not that big of a deal. But what is a big deal is that there are a lot of places that you'll go here. And if you don't take the receipt, they will freak out. They will flip and they will say, no, you have to take it. It's, it's, you, we're going to get in trouble or you'll get in trouble. And technically, from what I'm aware, I'm under the impression that you technically could actually get a fine. That's a, maybe a different discussion for a different day, but not having the receipt as the consumer, that could be a problem and also another problem for the store. But like if I, I, there's been a number of times, like, cause coming from an American mindset, oh, do you want your receipt? No, no, thanks. But here, you're not taking your receipt, but you, you have to take it. It's, it's, you, you have to, because there's a lot of things 
that are done in Italy where you have to do it the right way, and that's the only way to do it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. This is just there are certain accepted ways that things are done here. I mean, even the other day, I went to get some uh, ground beef from the supermarket, and they normally wrap it in plastic and then paper. Trying to be a decent person, lower the amount of plastic I use, and I said, hey, can you just wrap it in paper? That's good enough. I'm going to go home right away and cook this. And I've been in other places in the world where they just wrap it in paper, all said and done, a little tape, no questions asked. And the woman flipped. She said, no, I have to do it with the plastic. This is necessary. She went into a whole rant. Not that this isn't a rant, <laughs> but this is something to keep in mind, that there's always something. You have to do things a certain way. And this again kind of touches on the subject that I first spoke about in earlier, about how things can take a little bit of time here. And sometimes those things can take time because there's a process for things, but there's other times where things just take a long time because they just take a long time. And I've heard a lot of people use the excuse, well, oh, it's Italy, that's just how things are done here. That, that's, again, I'm gonna talk about this in a, a little bit more, but if, if you aren't willing to change your lifestyle, then this is going to be a problem for you. This is my next big point here, is that you have to be flexible when you are moving to another country and willing to take on different lifestyle habits. Not necessarily that you have to change who you are or, or what you are, but you need to be able to play by the rules of the local population. You absolutely will have to change your approach and you can't approach Italy from an American perspective. You can't approach Italy from a German perspective. You have to approach Italy as Italy and treat Italy the way that it is, for how it is. If you start saying, oh, Italy needs to change and Italy needs to this and Italy needs to that, then that's a problem. That is going to be something that you will face as your whole time as an expat living in that country, or even if you're a repat dual citizen coming back to uh, your, your land of origins, from uh, your family's land of origin, this is something that you have to take into consideration because the country is not going to change for you. Maybe there are people here who are frustrated. Not maybe, there are definitely people who do get frustrated with things how they are in Italy. And that's just how it is. It's Italy. This is how things work here. Again, this is the excuse that, that gets so often used. Could things be made better? I think there's the potential for it. Do I think things are going to change overnight? Oh, absolutely not. And please keep in mind, none of these are complaints because the overall idea is that you have to accept and take the good with the bad. This is just simply a list of if these are make or break issues for you, then it might not be the appropriate choice. And some of these you will find in other Latin countries. Maybe you won't find them in some other parts of the world, maybe Northern Europe, uh, or depending on where you go. But this is something that is definitely worth taking into consideration. But even with that said, I remember reading an article a while back. I almost never read the local here in Italy. Almost never. Especially when it comes to news. But there was an article that popped up and it was about expats who live in Italy and some of the issues that they face and some notes that I took earlier from, from what I remember about the article. I don't remember what the article was, otherwise I would link it below. But one person mentioned about how the charm of how things are done in Italy can wear off after a while and how it's uh, not necessarily amusing anymore that the locals live at their own pace. And after being in Italy shy of five years, I can see exactly what they mean because I came to Italy definitely for the slower pace of life. There are times that it's slowed down a little bit too much for me and I would prefer a little bit more hustle and bustle. But you have to accept the place for what it is. And of course, if you go to a city, you'll have a bit more hustle and bustle. But in comparison to maybe where you're from, the hustle and bustle may be a little less bustle and a little less hustle. And the next point that I wanna get into is that something that is extremely important, something that I've seen from so many expats, just a simple thing that you say in your normal speech can give away so much of where you are mentally, where your state is, what your state is. Back home, in the States, back home, in Canada, Australia, France, wherever. You have to change your concept of what is home. 
Yes, if you have a home, that is not a bad thing. And if you see your old country, your country of origin, as home, then that's where you may end up. If you can make home where you are, and this is a very different story. And this is not something that just comes overnight with, now I have mentally declared that this place is my home. No, 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 no. You have to actually work at it. It is a process to make a place your home. And I'm not saying this is going to happen in a year. I'm not going to say it's going to happen in three years or five years. It could. It could start. By the time you hit three years or so, that's when you start having some basic roots just settle down. And I don't know if I mentioned this in an episode, but there's a a five-year kind of window of the stages of being an expat that I've I've at least written up, and I, I may have put it in a very early episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter, but the first year, you just, you land it. It's like being born again. You, you're hearing everything around you, but you don't quite understand it. People are going blah, 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 and you can't talk back. And then that second year, you're starting to be able to walk and talk again, and to be able to waddle around and to say a couple simple words, mama, dada, yes, no food, hungry, (laughs) things like that. And then year three is kind of like that elementary through middle school to high school development where you're finally starting to become a person and really getting a feel for what it is actually like because you've gotten over the honeymoon phase. And that is so important that you have to break away from the honeymoon phase. This is I'm going to talk about that in a second, but you need to be able to see the place for what it is. And by the time you get to year four, You've already been through everything. You've started learning, and by year four, you should at least be able to have some communication. I'm not saying you should be able to be completely fluent, but you should be able to get around on your own without too much help. Fine, okay, maybe there are certain parts of the world where the language is very difficult, and it could be understandable. But if you're in a place like Italy, where the language is learnable, you should be able to have some progress there. And it's finally in year five when you really start to actually have those roots really take hold. Because that fourth year, the end of the fourth year, you really start feeling, you really feel like this is the place. You may have senses of that feeling before, but this is, anyway, just my opinion. It's a long tangent that I've gone on, but to get back to the rest of this episode. But again, getting back to the idea of home, what is home? Where is home? You, it comes partially from a mental state, but also the physical place around you. Do you have your, your home set up the way that you like it? Do you have it set up for comfort that you can reach for something easily, that you know where the things are? You've already got your, your junk drawer with all of the tape and pens and scissors and all those kinds of things that you may need, or you have those wires that have stockpiled up in your closet already. Or that you've gotten into your hobbies and been able to continue them and and prioritize them and continue with some of your passions, but not allowing expat to become your personality. This is something that I've seen a lot of people go through that they move abroad and they all of a sudden become the expat, the Italian expat, the American expat. But expat is not a personality type. It's a title or a, a label that can be thrown onto a person. It is not who you are. It's part of not necessarily what you are either, but it's just something you happen to fall into. But I see so many people that they fall into, I am the expat. I know the world. I am so worldly now. I have been gone three months and I know what the world is like and the people back in my home country, poo poo. Come on. (laughs) No, 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 no. But just something to be aware of. I've seen a lot of people fall into that, that there's this sense of uh, something snobby almost, snobbery, that they have left, that they have made their life abroad, and then a few months later, they can't work anymore and have to take a flight back home to to the country that they come from. This is what I'm talking about. You have to have a realistic idea of the world. In general, 
of Italy, of whatever country it is that you're moving to. Because this takes me into my next point. And if you think that moving to a country is going to solve all of your problems, then you are so greatly mistaken. If you think that moving to Italy is going to all of a sudden make your life wonderful with all of the rainbows, unicorns, and butterflies all at your fingertips, then no. No, real life happens. Maybe you visited a country, or Italy specifically, and you had a great time here. And yes, living here, you can continue to have a great time, but it is not going to be the same as that vacation. Like I was saying before, you have to get through those first couple years where you're still getting to know everything again, and you have those rose-tinted glasses where everything is beautiful and wonderful. It's important to keep yourself grounded in reality of what is actually going on, what a place is really like. And like I said, after my like 12 years abroad, I've seen people go through this and go through a really horrible shock once those, those glasses get lifted, once they come to the realization of reality. I've seen people go into horrible depression or just leave the country that they're in because they realize what's going on. And this is why I make the content that I do is because I think it's so important to have a realistic idea from the get go to be able to allow yourself to truly experience a place because that's when you're going to start enjoying it more as well. Because, yeah, you can enjoy it and have the fun, the pizza, the pasta, the amore, of course, shirts, mugs and onesies are available. <laughs> RafaelDiFuria.com slash NYAG gear. Be sure to check it out. But the, there is something to be said for the pizza pasta and amore. You can enjoy that, but it's something that you can earn. If you just take it, then you don't get the, the true enjoyment out of it. You enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. But when you've really made your life to make it happen and sacrificed, that's when you get the proper level of enjoyment that you deserve from it. This next point is a, just a very quick one, but the, the last point is a very important topic that I've touched on a little bit so far, but stick around for that last one. This one is that I've had such problems with bugs in this country, I can't even get started. The stink bugs here are, they're aggressive. <laughs> I didn't realize what they were until after having crushed a few of them or even zapped a few of them. And it's just the whole room just uh, nauseating. And then where I live specifically, and I don't know if the, the stink bug thing is a thing that's all around the country, but it's something I've experienced, unfortunately, quite a bit. And so like end of summertime. Ooh. Anyway, during the summer, mosquitoes, these little guys are aggressive. They will dive bomb you in the middle of the night at no end. Just something to keep in mind. But this isn't the whole country where I live actually specifically. It's kind of known for its mosquito problem. It's, there's a, a lot of uh, mos anti-mosquito technology that comes from this area. Even I think there was um, some of the mosquito repellents and um, like candles I think may have been developed here, or there was a certain type of candle or repellent that was developed here. Anyway, that's a different topic for a different day, but just something to keep in, in mind that this is something you could experience. And I believe there even are some parts of the country that may have scorpions. Don't quote me on that. Do your own research, but I feel like I've heard about that before. But this last point, is probably the most important point. I've touched on it in this episode and I've mentioned it in many, many episodes of Not Your Average Globetrotter, and that is learn the language. It's plain rude, at least not to try. I've seen people living in places even for decades without learning the local language, even in a country where the language is very learnable for an English speaker, because depending on what your native language is, Different languages have different levels of difficulty. That's just simply how it goes. But at least try. Once you're able to start communicating, things in life get so much easier. And this is another part of uh, making your life in a place and truly experiencing it. Once you can have conversations with people, the locals, and hear what their thoughts are, what they have to say, the way that they process the world and things around them, that's when you can really get in touch and understand things so much better. And it really is truly so satisfying when you finally can have a conversation with someone and get through an interaction and you do it all in the local language. But when you can do that on the phone, 
That is a whole extra level of satisfaction there. I remember the first time I had that experience in a foreign language. It wasn't Italian, but the first time I had that, I was jumping for joy because I had been so frustrated. And the telephone is the most difficult, regardless what language you're speaking or trying to speak. The phone, for some reason, is always seems to be the most difficult. But once, like, I, the, the, the call that I had was with my bank. I was jumping, I was shouting, I was excited because I'd been going through so much frustration for so long. But it's, again, from that practical perspective, from also an emotional perspective, because living abroad can be a very isolating experience. And part of that is because of the language. Once you can start breaking past that and making connections with not just expats and staying in your own little expat bubble, which I've mentioned again, there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses, positives and negatives. But once you can start connecting with locals, that makes a huge difference. But this is, of course, assuming you're in a place where locals are willing to connect with outsiders because there are some places that just simply aren't. That's how it goes, especially small towns in many places in the world. Larger cities, people usually seem to be a little bit more open, but it definitely depends on where you are. But anyway, again, this is not complaints about Italy or complaints about living abroad. This is just simply a list of things that could be a make or break for some people that could really make it so that a person may truly not be able to live and enjoy a life abroad in Italy and making it their home, or any country at that. But now that I'm here at this point, having talked about the things that you shouldn't move to Italy for, maybe in, in a future episode I'll have to do things that you should move to Italy for. So if, if you're interested in something like that, let me know. And then also, if you enjoy the background and seeing a little bit, let me know. Maybe, maybe I'll have to make this a regular thing. But anyway. As always, thank you so much for joining me on another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia, and thank you all so much for joining me again. A huge, huge thank you, even more so, to the patrons who help to make content like this possible on a monthly basis, as well as the one-time donators through rafaeldifuria.com slash support. And then also those of you who've bought the shirts, mugs, onesies, and more through rafaeldifuria.com slash NYAG gear with things like That's It, I'm Moving to Italy, and Pizza, Pasta, More, and more. <laughs> Thank you all again for joining me. Like I said, I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and I'll see you all next time. Later. <laughs>